Well, this is Radio Theory Part 3. Today we're going to talk about a rather interesting circuit. Actually, it's two circuits, well, three circuits in one. It'll be our detector circuit, which is also our first uh, audio circuit, as well as our AVC, which stands for Automatic Volume Control. Now, this radio actually has a little extra circuitry in here that's not actually, it's on the schematic, but the radio I actually have don't have it. And that's this here, and I wouldn't worry about it. Um, it's just a special filter uh, that's used in the a higher level model. Okay, now, this tube here is your detector and first audio tube. It's a dual diode. There's two diodes here. Triode, which is this right here. Now this part here will be your audio, first audio amplifier. And then these are your di diodes. Now this diode here, coming down here and hooking to the cathode, this circuitry here actually goes to ground. Um, this line along the very bottom down here represents ground. So this diode is actually just grounded out. It's not being used. So we're only using this diode. Now the way the detector works, when we get our signal coming in from our IF, it's 455 kilohertz and it's modulated. We want the modulation. We want the AF. We don't want the RF, which is the 455. So we have to detect it which is really, all this is a diode, and it's really nothing more than a rectifier. So the, the circuit actually runs from this way down through the coil and capacitor of the secondary of the IF, down through what is known as load, the load resistor for the AVC. This is also a pi filter, and I'll get to in that in a minute. It comes on down, comes across, goes through the volume control and down to ground which then in turn returns right back up to the cathode and that's your circuit. Now the volume control is also very important. This is actually the load load resistor for the audio for the detector. This one here will be the load resistor for the AVC and we'll get to that here in a minute. Now the reason why this is important is this establishes a rectified signal and a DC and that gets established across this resistor. What that does is it'll basically be the basis for how large our signal will be that goes through the capacitor and comes in to our grid. If this is too small then we'll have a very weak audio signal coming in and we won't have as much audio as we should have uh, going on out and out to the speaker. So the size of this is very important and if you're working on a radio you want to stay with whatever the design was. Uh, if it calls for a 500K then that's what you want to stay relatively close to. 500K would be perfect if that's what it calls for. So make sure that whatever the schematic calls for, you, you stay in that realm. That way you'll keep this tube operating correctly and have plenty of input signal to amplify to get and send on down to the final amp. Now the way a detector works, it just, it really truly is nothing more than a rectifier. And what it does it splits the signal up. If you, if I can find a good place on here, if you actually look at your, what's coming through here, if I draw a straight line, there's going to be a signal that looks like this, and coming like this, and then in here there's going to be the RF. Okay. This is 455. This, these humps represent the audio. When it goes through this, 
it's going to split off half of it. And you're left with just the, say, the top half. Now, why that's important, it, I can filter out the RF, but if I leave the AF like this, it's 180 degrees out of sync with each side. So when this is peaking, this is peaking to the negative, and when this is in a trough, so is this one. And what ends up happening is when I run it through, I'll end up, when I get to the amp, final amp and the, and the transformer, it'll just all cancel out. You won't have no audio. So you have to rectify it. So you just get that top half. This filter here, circuit, is what gets rid of the of our RF. When it comes down, this is impressed, this signal is impressed upon this resistor and these capacitors with the, in the Pi filter along with the resistor will actually get rid of and, and send to ground which is right here. This is in our ground connection. Send to ground and return us back the RF. The audio frequency the size of these capacitors cannot pass the audio frequency, so it'll go on. Now, the other thing that gets impressed here will be a certain amount of DC signal. Now, that DC signal that gets impressed upon this resistor, this load resistor, will be in relative strength to the strength of this signal, this audio. The stronger the audio, the bigger the voltage here. Now the interesting thing is, is the way the path works and the flow coming through here will set this, uh, the, the voltage across this resistor so that it's negative and positive on the DC, which gives me a negative voltage coming down this line. This is the AVC line. Now this AVC line will have a resistor here and off camera um, there's actually another capacitor over here those two make up an RC filter and their purpose isn't so much for the AVC. The AVC is actually the voltage is created in this resistor. What their job is is so that any fluctuations in audio will not be reflected in signal changes with AVC. Only true levels of RF and stuff will change this. Now, when the when a signal is coming through and if you're if you got your volume set and it say it's a, a relatively weak station, so you set your volume what happens is it, it sets up a voltage here and that voltage comes back down through the line and impresses itself upon the grid of the f first RF, IF amplifier as well as the converter or mixer tube. And the way that works and what happens is that's a fairly weak signal so it's a fairly weak voltage so the tubes will be running pretty close to their standard biasing, which means that they'll be amplifying just normally. But if you turn the dial and the volume stays where it's at, and you turn the, vo uh, the dial and you hit a strong station, this will increase this voltage across here, which in turn will create a higher negative voltage coming down the AVC and what that does is increase the negative voltage on the grid. And when you increase your negative voltage on your grids of your tubes, what that does is slow down the current flow through the tube and chokes it down so it don't amplify as much. If you don't have as much current going through, you don't amplify as well. So the strong station won't overwhelm you with sound. Now, this is a relatively slow process. I mean, and what I mean by that is is it happens fairly quickly and works fairly well, 
but they don't want they want the time constant on this RC filter to be such that changes in station strength or changes as the station may fade in and out or um, come in strong and then weak and stuff like this or you turn the dial and everything that it will affect the grids and keep the volume fairly same but when you're listening to one station and say there's music on there or something and they go high in their volume as they're singing or something and then down they don't want that affecting the ABC so they set the time constant to try to keep that from happening the slow or the the changes in audio that way are fairly fast enough that this filter circuit will not be able to have time to react now after dealing with the ABC our signal that comes down through impresses itself on the volume control which in turn feeds the first grid or the only grid the grid and the triode the first audio amplifier and this tube is rather interesting uh, in the way it's designed um, it's what is known as a high mu tube uh, which basically means that it's an extremely strong amplifier uh, for a triode, for any tube. The higher the mu, the stronger amplifier it is. And they want that, uh, being that it is only a triode, they want, they want a fairly good amplifier here to feed the output tube. So it comes in the grid then goes out the plate then on to your final amp now there's other styles of uh, setups for detection there is nothing but just a pure diode tube and you can get those there's other connections you can have where they actually just connect the two diodes together there's circuits where they take one diode is strictly for detection the other diode will be hooked up so it runs the ABC um, there's some other setups there's one type that uses a triode tube but it actually only uses the grid and the cathode as far as operation of the detector now I'll get into that type of detector because that's used only or pretty much only in uh, TRF radios and I want to touch on those after this series and kind of go through those and how they operate so you might get one and they're they're a fun radio to work on and rather interesting so you'll need to know how their detector works uh, there's also been tubes or, or setups where they've used a tube that is called just a pinto tube where it's got three grids in it basically any other style tube that they may use a lot of times they will just uh, ground out or connect to the cathode all the other grids or circuits in them so that they still just act like a diode the diode um, detector is really the most common used that's uh, about all I can say about them uh, like I say I'll get into the special style uh, triode detector that uh, is used in TRS when we get in those and I'll go over a little bit more about detection but it's basically the biggest thing to remember it is just nothing but a rectifier that's rectifying the RF so that I only that I can get just one half of that audio and that way when I filter out the audio can be amplified and sent on down the line without it being canceled out so I guess that's about it on this um, I noticed there were some comments about the math if you guys would like to see more math um, I can do another video on it uh, just let me know in the comments and I can do something else on it and if you have any questions just let me know and 
I'll see what I can do to answer them. Thank you.